in case symptoms develop. And National Lipid Association, which I'm personally a member of this important uh, association, recommended don't or don't advise measuring CK level at baseline in all patients, but rather only in those at high risk for myopathy, such as elderly patient, patient receiving concomitant medication, or patient with renal or hepatic dysfunction. And the American uh, College of Cardiology and American Heart Association advise measuring CK level at baseline for all patients before initiation of statin therapy because asymptomatic CK elevation are common and could affect later clinical decision. Myself, I uh, measure uh, CK at baseline. Now uh, to the more complex and challenging uh, area, which is the management of such patient. So uh, if a patient develops myopathy symptoms while receiving therapy, the uh, expert uh, groups recommend determining serum CK level and comparing them with baseline CK level, if available, in addition to searching for other causes regardless of CK elevation. And also they advise measuring serum thyroid stimulating hormone level because hypothyroidism can present with myopathy or CK elevation as well as vitamin D deficiency. And uh, the management uh, broken down to three groups. The first group, which is really common in clinical practice, tolerable muscle symptoms have CK level three to 10 times the upper limit of normal. And the second group, intolerable, muscle symptoms or CK more than 10 times the upper limit of normal and the most rare okay the rabdu or a CK more than 10,000 or a CK more than 10 times upper limit of normal with an elevation in serum uh, creatinine so we'll start by the first group or the first case scenario that patients with muscle symptoms have CK level 3 to 10 times the upper limit of normal so what to do if symptoms are tolerable or asymptomatic, the National Lipid Association recommends no change in therapy and symptoms may be used as clinical guide for determining whether to continue or stop therapy. And the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association advise weekly monitoring of both CK level and symptoms, either uh, until symptoms or CK kinase level significantly worsen or until there is no longer a medical concern. If CK uh, measurement increase progressively or symptoms worsen, statin therapy may be temporarily suspended or the dose decrease with monitoring for improvement of the clinical situation. The second case scenario for symptomatic uh, increase in serum CK level greater than 10 times. So the previous group, 3 to 10 times. This is more than 10 times the upper limit of normal. Uh, the American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology advise immediate suspension of statin therapy. So this, we have to stop it. But in contrast, the National Lipid Association recommends the statin therapy be discontinued in patients who develop intolerable muscle symptoms regardless of CK elevation or in patient with rhabdo. So in this we have to clarify, so if it is more than, if there is severe symptoms, regardless of the, uh, the CK elevation, whether it is more than 10 times or less, I mean National Lipid Association stop, but American Heart Association, they will stop provided that CK level more than 10 times. And the third case scenario, which is the rhabdo, uh, in patients who develop rhabdomyolysis, a CK more than 10,000 or CK more than 10 times our limit of normal with an elevation in serum creatinine uh, or requiring IV hydration. As you know, I mean, rhabdomyolysis will be a uh, breakdown of the muscles or destruction of the muscles and leakage of all the intracellular uh, electrolytes and uh, will lead to uh, myoglobinuria and acute renal failure. So hydration or IV hydration is the mainstay of therapy. In addition to discontinuation of the offending drug, which is statin. Uh, once recovered, the risk versus benefit of statin therapy should be carefully reconsidered.
Okay, so the management options for managing statin myopathy include statin switching, particularly to fluvastatin, which is the least potent, or low-dose rosuvastatin, or non-daily dosing regimens, or non-statin alternatives such as azitrol or azitimab and bile acid binding resins, and coenzyme Q10 supplementation. So starting by uh, switching the statin, the PRIMO study, which I uh, mentioned earlier in my previous slide, uh, showed that patients receiving fluvastatin had fewer myopathy symptoms than this dose receiving lovastatin, simve, or atorvastatin. And also no case or no single case of fatal rhabdomyolysis has ever been reported with the fluvastatin because the least uh, potent. And a randomized double-blind, double-placebo trial recently evaluated the safety and efficacy of two 12 weeks of treatment using extended release fluvastatin 80 milligram alone, ezetimab 10 milligram per day alone, or the combination among 90, 199 patients with symptomatic myopathy after receiving other statins. And because high statin dose and drug-drug interactions are risk factor for statin myopathy, Rosuvastatin may be considered because it uh, comparably decreases LDL cholesterol level at approximately 50% of the dose of atorvastatin, 10 mg of uh, rosuvastatin equivalent to 20 of uh, atorvastatin and 20 of rosuv equivalent to 40. And uh, the rosuvastatin is metabolized by CYP2C9, which has a theoretical benefit in patients receiving several medications. We have to pay uh, attention. Uh, this isoenzyme also uh, metabolizes warfarin. So we have to uh, exercise extreme caution when we combine warfarin with uh, rosuvastatin or Crestor. And non-daily dosing of statins. So atorvastatin, this is important uh, fact, atorvastatin and rosuv have relatively long plasma half-lives, 15 and 20 hours respectively. So the longest half-life is uh, rosuvastatin, which is 20 hours, which renders the potentially suitable for non-daily dosing regimens to lower LDL cholesterol level while possibly reducing adverse effects. Like in our patient, we, after uh, recovery of uh, the symptoms and uh, CK, we challenge the patient with non-daily uh, dosing of uh, rosuvastatin. It was uh, 10 milligram three times per week, and it did well. The patient did not uh, have recurrence of the uh, rhabdo or uh, statin-related myopathy. And alternative day atorvastatin has been studied in hypercholesteremic patient. It also, the half-life is long, uh, like 16 hour. A double-blind placebo control trial of 35 patients receiving atorvastatin 10 milligram versus alternate day atorvastatin 10 milligram showed LDL cholesterol reduction of 38% and 35% respectively with no development of myopathy. So they are equivalent, okay? And non-daily dosing of statin, uh, non-daily dosing of rosuvastatin has been evaluated as well in patients with the previous statin intolerance. And among 51 patients with previous statin intolerance who received rosuva 5 or 10 milligram, mean 5.6 milligram per day on alternate days for a mean of 4.6 uh, months, the mean LDL cholesterol reduction was 34.5 and 80% of patients had no recurrence of myalgia. 
uh, once weekly rizofastatin 5 to 20 milligram resulted in statin uh, tolerance and a mean LDL cholesterol reduction of 29% uh, among eight patients with previous statin intolerance. Like for some patients who are really, they don't want to take daily, uh, I mean, uh, statin, we can sometimes, okay, case by case, we give, uh, I mean, non-daily uh, dosing or once weekly. Is it roll or is it map? Uh, decreases LDL cholesterol levels by targeting the NPC1L1 transporter and inhibiting intestinal cholesterol absorption as monotherapy decreases uh, LDL about 18% and the addition of uh, ezetimab to existing statin therapy causes LDL cholesterol reduction similar to those achieved with higher dose of statin alone. So this is uh, another uh, management option. Then uh, pile acid uh, binding resins uh, such as cholestipol uh, and cholestyramine, uh, they interrupt enterohepatic recycling of pile acids in the terminal ileum as ammonotherapy decreases uh, LDL 15 to 26%. Coenzyme Q10 supplementation. Uh, as you know, coenzyme uh, Q10 depletion may play a role in statin myopathy, and some clinicians recommend that patient taking statin take coenzyme Q10 to try to prevent uh, myopathy. However, the evidence from two randomized control trials found no significant difference in myelgia score, and because of a lack of firm evidence, a recent systematic review did not recommend routine use of coenzyme Q10. However, supplementation still might be considered in some patients who don't benefit from uh, other uh, approaches. And I have used it uh, personally during my fellowship training in Canada uh, and uh, proved to be effective. Okay, so the approach, this is a summary uh, slide. Uh, it will summarize the whole presentation. The approach to patients with a history of statin associated myalgias. So number one, uh, initiate or intensify therapeutic lifestyle changes, which is very important for all patients. And number two, decrease statin dose. Three, discontinue statin and rechallenge at a later uh, date. And number four, reduce dose of statin and uh, add ezetimab. And number five, use a different statin or statin-like uh, supplement. So you can use flovastatin, which is the least potent 80 milligram, or rosuvastatin at lower dosage or non-daily dosing, or weekly. And atorvastatin, you can use, again, uh, similar to rosuvastatin, three times uh, weekly. Then, again, uh, important uh, to use uh, pulse statin uh, therapy and uh, switch class of lipid lowering agent to use ezetimab is is alone or combined ezetrol or ezetimab and uh, the uh, cholestipol. And important to check vitamin D level and replenish a flow and uh, low density lipoprotein cholesterol apheresis in some uh, clinical setting. And to add coenzyme Q10 ubiquinone 200 milligram per day to statin therapy. Now I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Thank you uh, very much for listening.